My friend is his breath play. If someone dies at my hands, I have to accept the consequences. If you cause that person's death, you have that responsibility. I wouldn't like anybody to die. The feel of plastic, the tightness of it, the game of suffocating, being short of breath, and having it wrapped tightly around my face. It's just a terrible, dark secret. When I was at school, I started doing judo. When I put people in strangleholds, I found it quite erotic. To find a partner is very hard. You can't shut up somebody and say, oh, by the way, do you like being strangled or suffocated? Um, it wasn't until I went to sort of fetish clubs and meeting people, I was a little bit more open with it and I found out it was a lot easier. Well, you do get sexually excited. I'm actually on them, I'm touching them, I'm close to the body, you know, I'm caressing them into whatever I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm coaxing them into the stuff that I want to do. He has to show a reaction, he has to, basically he has to fight against it. For me, that excites me. I mean, actually control that person's life. Although we're sexually excited, we enjoy the play. Our responsibility is as submissive and you, you can't do anything more than, you know, keep an eye on them and be totally responsible. You know, in that fantasy, some of them want to be killed. You know, is that, you know, they have a snuff fantasy. Um, and you can get to the edge of that. But in reality, you're not going to kill them. And I'll get a guy said, oh, you know, you can kill me now if you want. And I think, well, that spoils the scene a little bit for me. They want to go further all the time and they don't want to stop. But as a, a good top and a good master, you have to know when to stop. For me, it's the control. And now that person's actually given themselves up to me. It's about release and it's about control uh, and it's about power. And giving someone control over your breathing is a pretty basic form of control. Now the risks of um, breath play or asphyxiation play are fairly straightforward. Humans need oxygen in order to live, so the risk is death. If you cut off blood from your brain, you risk brain damage. Um, there are nerves at the back of your neck that can instantly trigger cardiac arrest. So tying any sort of ligature around your neck or denying your brain oxygen for too long risks plunging you into unconsciousness and then in an extreme form, killing you. You can't make people do it. They have to want to do it. Um, if the public perception is it's dangerous, it's always gonna be dangerous and, and that's in their mind. For me, it's natural to do breath play because I'm so used to it. But someone who's never done it before, it obviously will feel unnatural, the same as anything. If you've never been tied up before, you're gonna be nervous. People who are engaging in suffocation, strangulation, death simulation, are really risking criminal prosecution if their partner subsequently dies. We still have choking offences and strangulation offences, so um, we treat in law the choking and strangulation as people as sufficiently serious to be prosecuted, whether or not it results in death. When I was very, very small, I was afraid of the dark. So I would have these images of demons waiting in the um, shadows to pounce on me. And I found at the, uh, you know, I don't know, seven or eight, that I was becoming aroused by it. In a strange way, what I did at night was to turn these demons that were out to get me into people that were going to be wrapping me up in bandages. And so that became a sort of sexual fantasy. And I think what I did was eroticize my fear. It's a terrifying thing to do, it's like a kind of suicide. But at that time, I also found it incredibly arousing. I meet or come across online young men who are at the beginning of their adventure and sometimes I worry about them because I think, you know, you really had to dig and search hard when, uh, when I was a young man. And uh, there are kids now that are getting into it at a very early age and I, I you know, I do worry about that. I may, may have taken a lot of risks, but I met people that were just wanting to do the same thing as me, and that is to share in some exclusive and rather eccentric activity, which would bring us both to a delightful orgasm.
Auto asphyxiation um, is uh, extremely risky behaviour and is responsible for an awful lot of deaths. You're playing by yourself and there is nobody to keep an eye on you while you're doing it. It's very, very easy to take it too far and accidentally kill themselves. Coroners often record a verdict of suicide when people um, just took it too far by accident. Society is concerned about asphyxiation in a sexual context because it is so dangerous, it is so manifestly dangerous. These things are uh, bad, naughty, uh, illegal, and it's because they are bad, naughty, illegal that people like doing them. It's going to be a prickly subject when you set it against uh, the norms of society. For many years, what I thought I was doing was completely unique. And, uh, and, and I was particularly weird. I think people yearn to find a way of uh, slipping into another uh, headspace. And some people do it with alcohol and other people do it with drugs. A lot of people do it through sex. Uh, wearing a mask puts you in another headspace. It stops them worrying about the, the tax and the gas bill and the the MOT on their car and it just puts them into another zone and I think as a society more and more we're going to for rightly or wrongly I think people are going to want to find ways of slipping out of that normal zone into something else.